Oh boy, do I love my gas stove. Oh boy, do I love slopping together a big wet lunch on my gas stove. Hashtag cooking with gas. And posted. Sorry, I just had to do a quick Instagram post about just the vague concept of the gas stove. A very real thing the natural gas lobby is quietly paying influencers to do. Not to advertise a specific brand of gas stove or gas utility, just to remind us that we love gas. And if anyone should, I don't know, try to get us to stop using gas for any reason, then it's a war on dear sweet gas. And we can't let that happen to gas. Gas has always been there for us. Gas was there when our girlfriends broke up with us, okay? Gas has only been nice to us. I love gas. I love you, gas. Do you love me? And if it feels like the natural gas industry paying kids to post pro-gas messages has big let's get out in front of this energy, you nailed it. Because natural gas, like coal and oil, is a fossil fuel. And as countless studies and climate scientists and all the fossil fuel companies themselves have noted, burning fossil fuels releases greenhouse gases, which heat up the planet and cause things like increased fires and floods and droughts and a whole bunch of climate change et cetera that devastate families and ruin lives. Now, gas utilities don't like climate change, but they really don't like losing even the tiniest bit of money. So they've decided to make one final desperate stand at the gas stove, despite the fact that they know it's worse for their customers, our cities, and just the whole planet. Hi, I'm Raleigh Williams, unconventionally unattractive, and a climate science and policy master's degree recipient. Boop, boop, boop. And I'm here to tell you that it might be time for us to break up with our gas stoves, despite what you may have seen on Instagram. Welcome to Climate Town. One thing to know about the natural gas industry is that it's got a long and proud tradition of absolutely batshit insane advertisements. I don't get the gas now. At Washington, natural gas! When I discovered electricity, I never meant for people to heat their homes with it. Gas advertisements finally answer the question, what if we just never said no to any idea? They are all over the place, but a few center around some common themes such as, natural gas will make you attractive to your wife again. Barry? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Electricity both doesn't work and does work, but is way too expensive. Natural gas is clean, and some variation on the electric utility company hates you and wants you to shower with this racist depiction of an Asian man. <laughs> Call public service company. But please, brace yourself for my personal favorite, Rapping with gas. Cooking with gas. gas. Cooking with gas. gas. We all cook better when we're cooking with gas. gas. Gas is so hot, it's not on when it's not. It's the only way to cook. That's, That's what we were taught. Oh, <sighs> that song is over four minutes long. And despite the fact that they repeat the hook, cooking, cooking with gas. gas. Cooking with gas. Cooking with gas. Cooking with gas. 36 times. They titled the song Rappin' With Gas, but that's just because, you know, that song was written from the top of a pile of cocaine, and after the five minutes it took to write that song, they had already forgotten what they <laughs> And that hook isn't new. Now you're cooking with gas. Cooking with Gas has been an industry standby since the 1930s when gas PR guy Deke Holgate pitched it to Bob Hope's writers, and it became a radio catchphrase, and my, God, what an old sounding sentence that is. That is the kind of sentence that like, knows everybody at the grocery store and wants to introduce you to the lady who works in the bread department when you come home to visit. Who's single, by the way. Yeah, well, she's also like 45, by the way, dad. I mean, old sounding sentence. Mmm, yeah, unsalted, cold, barely cooked egg from four hours ago. Now that is Hollywood. Okay, Hollywood isn't all about glamorous 20 to 30 egg breakfasts. There's a lot going on in the edit bay behind the scenes. Speaking of behind the scenes, isn't it weird that natural gas advertisements are almost all focused on the gas stove, despite the fact that the gas stove represents just 3% of residential natural gas sales? According to the Energy Information Administration, 26% of natural gas sales come from water heating, and an astounding 69% of natural gas sales come from space heating. So why is such a huge fraction of the natural gas marketing budget aimed at such a small fraction of the gas sales? 
Well, it's probably because all the natural gas you use in your home comes in through the same pipe. And if you or the apartment complex you live in decides to invest in the gas infrastructure for gas stoves, it's a much easier jump to the real gas heating money makers. It's like how Costco sells whole rotisserie chickens for $5. They're not making their money on the $5 chicken. They're using the $5 chicken to get you in the door. And then they make their real money when you impulse buy a drone on your way out. And I kind of lost the thread, but I think in this metaphor, a gas furnace is the drone or a water boiler is the drone or both. Whatever, I'm sure this part will be cut in the fall. And for about 70-ish years, the natural gas industry tried to hammer home this concept that gas was cleaner and cheaper and faster, and electric stoves and heaters were slower and inefficient and the property of communist China. And for a while, they were not entirely wrong. I can't speak to the communist China stuff, but calling natural gas the clean burning alternative to electric used to be pretty accurate because electricity used to be mainly powered by coal fire power plants, which are directly linked to asthma, cancer, and heart and lung disease. You know, real day ruiners. And that's where the fact that we live in the 2020s actually makes a difference. I'll pick that up later. You see, gas isn't actually cleaner or cheaper or better anymore. There's a lot of ways to define cleaner and gas loses to electric in like every category. Take your personal health for example. A gas stove might look pretty clean, but this is a literal open flame in your kitchen. Gas stoves can lead to carbon monoxide levels three to six times higher than electric ranges. Gas stoves also produce double the harmful particulate matter, and the elevated nitrogen dioxide levels associated with gas stoves can affect the mental and respiratory development of children. In 1986, when the EPA's Clean Air Scientific Advisory Committee found some troubling evidence that elevated nitrogen dioxide levels were having some pretty negative impacts on children, the gas industry had this to say. Well, it's three times less in the east or west, so remember those figures when it's time to take a test. And since the Clean Air Act of 1970 doesn't have jurisdiction over private residences, the gas industry wasn't legally obligated to disclose the dangers of these chemicals to the people who were you know, breathing them in every day. And yeah, a lot of the early model electric stovetops sucked. It was basically like the dial-up internet of cooking. And ladies, here's a tip for you. When you go shopping for your ranges, take your husbands along. They know real values. But luckily, just like the internet, electric cooking has gotten super goddamn good. New electric stove technology is called induction br We're supposed to be in an Ikea. There we go. Okay, new electric cooking technology is called induction. It's a big upgrade from gas and it uses, get this, magnets. Water, fire, air, and dirt. Fucking magnets, how do they work? Wow. Look, I know that song came out after 9-11, but it feels very pre-9-11. Does that make sense? Whatever. Induction magnets work by creating an alternating magnetic current that heats the metal directly in the pan instead of the cooktop, which allows it to cook things twice as fast with literally twice the precision. Also, and this is a bonus, it doesn't cook the absolute shit out of everything around it on the grill. Hey, we got kicked out. Apparently you're not supposed to lean on all their stuff or film without their permission. I totally understand it. And for the record, I do not have an induction burner myself. I rent an apartment from a man I've never met who responds to less than 25% of my emails. I do not have an induction burner, okay? I'm not trying to sit here and tell you you're a bad person if you cook on gas. You're not a bad person. Actually, I don't know you. Maybe you are a bad person. That is between you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that is the loudest truck I've ever heard. The point is, induction is not some kind of fad like Chia Pets or television, okay? It is here to stay. Even professional chefs like Michelle Rue Jr. are switching to induction. All the sauce is getting ready for lunch. And what's great about the induction is there's no heat. It's lovely. It's a great environment to be working in. Even commercial pizza ovens that have to get way hotter than your oven at home are moving to all electric. Now, unfortunately, we couldn't afford to shoot in one of those pizza places. Psych! Location change, baby! We got a Patreon page now where people pay like five bucks a month and the link is in the bio. And now we can go inside of places without getting kicked out after 20 minutes. One of those insides is La Rossi Pizza in Brooklyn, New York, where they have, among other things, an all electric pizza oven that gets super hot. How hot does this oven get? 950 degrees. 950 degrees, that's so goddamn hot. But we're gonna cook myself a little pizza. And here's a slice of pizza. 
and it's fantastic. I mean, if it wasn't fantastic, would I be able to cram this entire slice in my mouth at once? Probably, but I wouldn't. But look, I get it. Maybe you just prefer cooking with gas. All right, maybe you're willing to take the risk for the advantage of a flame. Fine, totally understandable. And it's actually a fairly popular opinion. And we know this because the gas industry knows this. Because when they realized they couldn't compete with electricity in terms of health or quality, they had to find a way to appeal to people's emotional attachment to their product. So the American Public Gas Association, an industry group representing over 700 gas utilities, hired the hotshot PR company Porter & Novelli to figure out how to manipulate people's emotions enough to keep them using gas. Well, Porter & Novelli did the research and they found out that people don't give a shit about whether their water boiler is gas or electric. And people don't give a shit about whether their heater is gas or electric. But people do give a shit about their gas stove. And that's the ticket, baby. Maybe. If we can get enough people to keep buying gas, we can prolong the gas transition into electric until, you know what, we don't need an end game when we got cocaine. Howdy partners, this is no ordinary house. This is a home on the main, the Nashville gas main. Who was that gas man? Why he's cocaine. And as much fun as those Peruvian schneef powder fueled ads used to be, people see right through that kind of thing now. So the gas industry had to find some new way to reincept the idea of we love gas into the minds of people as soon as possible. And dang it if they didn't use up all their best lines in that rapping with gas song. Cooking with gas. It's cleaner. Clean. The flame consumes the smoke and grease. You know what I mean? The flame consumes the smoke and grease. You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. Are you talking about a grease fire? Are you bragging about having a grease fire? Whatever. Porter Novelli had a different plan. Influences. But you don't have to take my word for it. Here's a very real page from the Porter Novelli proposal they wrote for the American Public Gas Association showing their target audiences of Hispanic millennials, design enthusiasts, promising families, and young city solos. Each one is paired to a season, and each combination makes exactly zero fing sense. But hey, it wouldn't be much of a gas ad if it made any sense, now would it? And as fast as you could say Hispanic millennials represent the winter, the American Public Gas Association spent $300,000 on a PR campaign that got small market influencers to make posts like this. And would you look at that, it's all stoves. That thing that makes them just 3% of their money. So weird. And notice something else here, they're no longer making the claim that it's cleaner because it isn't. And they no longer claim it's cheaper because it's not. Now the big selling point is that natural gas is faster, which is true if you're only counting traditional electric coils and not the much faster induction cooktops. But the real question is why are they spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a campaign that doesn't even mention an actual brand or a way for people to buy their product? And sure, paying influencers to post about how precisely they can cook a taco doesn't seem that bad. But what they're actually doing is paying influencers to trick their audience into helping the gas company avoid climate legislation. Oh yeah, it's all about climate change with me. That's my whole thing. That's my entire deal. I am insufferable to be around nowadays. Okay, we get it. You're self-deprecating. This guy. Oh, and another edit bay bit? Ugh, you, you can't just dump to an edit bay every time you forget to write a joke. Ugh, this guy. And since I'm not a hack, like some people I know, let's go ahead and bring this burden of proof train into the station with a nice gas industry internal document smoking gun style. This is the 2018 Speak Up for Natural Gas Advocacy Training Workshop document, link in the bio, sponsored by three of the biggest gas trade organizations in America. And in this document, they detail their plans to ask their employees to spread pro-gas messages and stories on social media, which, in my opinion, is a pretty whack-ass thing for a boss to ask their employees to do. They discuss how local citizens and advocates might not want natural gas extracted from their hometowns or pipelines built right through their backyards, and how gas employees promoting gas can sometimes be enough to change the narrative. They go over best practices for storytelling, how to control the narrative, and their big smoking conclusion in a document about which pro-gas arguments they should use is right here. Emotional arguments can shape the public narrative even when the facts don't support them. Emotional arguments can shape the public narrative even when the facts don't support them. Whew. 
Ooh, now they claim they're learning this tactic from the pro-environmental movement, but they go on to detail a whole bunch of other ways they can do it, and they conclude the document with this. It all boils down to how the natural gas industry chooses to tell its story. So Porter Novelli takes care of the influencers, and then the gas industry asks its own employees to jump on social media and spread a bunch of pro-gas disinformation. Wait, I'm sorry, that should be correcting misinformation. And speaking of correcting misinformation. Hey, here's a fun, cool climate change fact you can tell your friends. Natural gas is as big of a driver of climate change as coal. And I know that might sound weird because common knowledge says coal is much dirtier burning than natural gas, and in a lot of ways it is. Burning coal releases all sorts of compounds that have certain health and environmental implications. But in terms of just climate change causing greenhouse gases, the math is not good for natural gas. The US Energy Information Administration says gas emits almost 50% less CO2 than coal, or half of one pizza. But natural gas is primarily composed of methane, which is itself a greenhouse gas with 80 times the potency of carbon dioxide over a 20 year period. And that's where fugitive emissions come into play. You can think of fugitive emissions like when a chemical escapes the supply chain before being turned into heat or energy. When a lump of coal falls off a truck on the way to a power plant, it just becomes a rock or like some lonely kid's best friend in a depressing kid's book. Do they still make those? If they do, I feel like my friend Cole would do Harry Potter numbers. But the thing is, when natural gas leaks out of one of the two million miles of pipes and gas lines that transport natural gas around America and gets into the air, it becomes an ultra potent greenhouse gas in the atmosphere. So if we're doing the math, it turns out we can afford to lose about 4% of natural gas through leaks before we're actually heating the planet more than the coal it was supposed to be displacing. And guess what percent we actually lose? It's like nine percent. Here it is in pizza slices. Now I'm not suggesting we should go back to coal. I'm suggesting we should haul ass towards electrification via renewables and battery technology. Even if we electrified every building overnight, it wouldn't cut natural gas out of the equation. Natural gas is still used as like one of the main fuel sources to generate electricity. But the reductions in emissions and fugitive emissions we would see from not having to pipe fossil fuels into 70 million buildings in America would represent an enormous reduction in our overall emissions. Today, buildings are generating about 30% of all of America's emissions via direct combustion of fossil fuels and fossil fuels in the electricity. And we have all the technology we need to greatly reduce those emissions already. But that would mean the gas industry couldn't sell gas outside of power plants, and that's gonna be a big no from the gas industry, dog. So in the past few years, cities have begun to realize that climate change is a big problem, and that fossil fuel-powered buildings aren't gonna cut it anymore. So they began passing laws to remove gas from new buildings. While a lot of comprehensive climate policy needs to come from a national level, like putting a price on carbon pollution or adopting a federal clean energy standard, city governments get to write their own building codes, which led to 50 cities in California implementing this no new gas buildings policy pretty quickly. But then the craziest thing happened. Gas lobby groups went around to states with Republican-controlled legislatures and worked with them to quietly pass legislation that made gas utilities exempt from city regulation. They're called preemption laws, and they call them that because of the way they preemptively let gas lobby groups do whatever the f they want. And they passed them so quietly that when Tucson, Arizona tried to pass a no new gas buildings law, they discovered they legally couldn't because state Republicans had just adopted a statewide gas exemption. Which, you know, feels pretty ironic for a political party whose whole thing is that they're against government overreach. Wouldn't you say? Texas then passed their own preemption law, then Oklahoma, and now a total of 20 state legislatures passed preemption laws to protect the precious gas industry from cities who want to set their own building codes. And so here we are when the gas industry had to choose between destroying the environment for you and your children or taking a financial hit, they picked the money. And they enlisted the help of a few gullible influencers, morally bankrupt politicians, and even made their own employees post on Facebook about it. And so far, it's working for them. So if you're sitting there, or standing there, or even leaning there, and you wanna know how you can get involved, there's a couple things you can do. First, and most importantly, you can support these building electrification advocacy groups using the links in the bio. You can also call your local representatives and let them know you are very pro-building electrification. Or, if you live in one of 
these 20 states, you can call them up and let them know that you think preemption laws are some serious bullshit. If you happen to be in a place in your life where you can opt out of gas stoves, consider getting an induction burner, but the real name of the game here is collective action. Get out there, join those groups, and make some friends. Or at the very least, just make it a point to get more educated about the climate crisis. Because when enough informed climate advocates get together, oh boy, then we will really be cooking with... Cooking with electric. Take it away, Elton John. Like electricity. Electricity. Thank you so much for watching. I can tell this one is gonna get away from me. It's gonna be like 22 minutes long or something psychotic like that. And I really appreciate you sticking all the way to the end. I got a Patreon page. It's got about like 1300-ish patrons right now. Um, it really helps to make these videos, you know, like being able to go places and get on trains and buy pizzas and that kind of thing. If you're watching right now and you're like, I'm not donating, that's totally fine. I'll still make the videos, no worries. If you are interested in helping me out, I'm gonna do an incentive thing here, where uh, if we hit 1,600 patrons by the end of the year, of our Lord 2021, I will produce like a good version of this with better lyrics that are factually accurate. See, it might not be worth it, honestly, and I get that, and so don't worry about it. But if you want that, then join the Patreon page. Okay. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. I have not tried marijuana. Uh, I have never used it at any time.